Hi, Dr. Nina. It's so nice to meet you and so excited for you to be here in the Girl Up Global Leadership Summit. How are you doing? I'm good, thanks, Dira. It's lovely to meet you virtually and thank you for having this conversation with me today. I'm very much looking forward to it. Yeah, same. Um, I'm very much excited because as a Girl Up Teen Advisor this year, I've been using storytelling a lot for my activism, and I know that's something that you're great at. So maybe we can go straight to our first question and discussion um, about your recent book, actually. Um, in your most recent book, Anonymous is a Woman, you discuss various women who made huge impacts on society, but they felt as if they didn't have a voice. What's your message to people who feel like they still don't have a voice or are not being heard? Dira, that's a great question. Uh, the women I profiled in my book were actually born prior to 1900. The reason I profiled women uh, born in, you know, in the earlier centuries was to show that despite limitations, each and every one of those women was able to excel um, in practically every field in various endeavors. Um, as a way to pay homage to them and also celebrate our achievements and to show what is possible despite the limitations. Um, thankfully today, because of technology and social media, it has enabled even the hardest to reach voices to be heard. Um, even in societies where there is censorship and repression, um, we still have the ability to amplify the voices of those who are living in vulnerable and marginalized communities, uh, those who are living in oppressive societies. So the more we raise awareness and amplify those issues, the more we are able to uh, create ripple effects across borders. Thank you so much. Um, I personally am really in awe at the fact that um, the women you profiled were, I guess, from different generations than me. And I get to see how, um, although times have changed, sometimes a lot of the things us women go through are pretty similar despite different contexts. Mm -hmm. And relating to that, mm -hmm. I also noticed that a major challenge with advocacy, um, in particular also gender justice advocacy, is that it moves in waves, mm -hmm. especially in relation to what's in the news cycle. How do you think we can transform social justice moments into sustainable and collective community movements? Dira, um, a perfect example of transforming social justice movements into sustainable collective community movements is the recent Woman Life Freedom Movement in Iran, which began back in September um, due to the horrific killing of Kurdish Iranian woman Masajina Amini for supposedly being improperly veiled by Iran's morality police, which spearheaded the Woman Life freedom movement that has gained momentum and continues 10 months into the Iran's freedom movement. And a large uh, component of the life that this movement continues to fuel is because of the Iranian diaspora, as well as the global community um, amplifying the voices of this movement. So when you have a so when you have injustice in one corner of the world, the way to keep it going is for international outrage, for international outcry, and to do online advocacy, create online advocacy advocacy groups, not only just to raise awareness, but for the purpose of encouraging others to do the same. We saw the same thing happen, if you recall, with um, the horrific killing of George Floyd as well, which brought issues of racism to the forefront. So um, I think uh, keeping the spotlight on a movement that is particularly relevant, that many people around the global community can identify with, specifically when it consider, is concerning gender justice issues, um, in discrimination against women, against ethnic minorities, racism. I think it's important to keep the spotlight on those issues and turn it into, as you said, a collective and sustainable movement. Thank you so much. I think it's also very important that um, we focus on these things that are relevant to us as well. And as an Indonesian girl, um, I see that there's lots of change in um, the, I guess, 
activism um, in my country and how it affects us uh, young girls to be empowered and help out as well. And although progress on women's rights isn't a guarantee, in fact, has been backsliding in many countries, uh, including my own in certain times, it has been inspiring, mm-hmm. such as what we see in Iran, like what you talked about. Um, on that note, how do you think us girls and activists can stay vigilant in protecting the rights that we do have while still keeping an eye on said progress? Dear, that's a great question. And you mentioned you come from Indonesia. I come from Iran and I grew up in pre-revolutionary Iran where women uh, had, you know, been afforded rights and opportunities. Um, And I saw how those rights and opportunities were taken away virtually overnight. And we've seen similar um, situation more recently in Afghanistan. So anytime there's setback, Um, Those are powerful reminders for all of us not to be complacent, particularly in our assumption that progress is linear when it comes to women's rights. One of the most effective tools for countering the worrisome erosion of women's rights is advocacy. Um, Advocacy has um, the potential to bring attention, um, specifically in uh, societies where there's repression, where there's backlash, severe backlash against women's rights. And another critical way is um, by pushing for legislative change and promoting effective implementation of the legal framework. But more importantly is for us to show solidarity not only with women's rights activists in those region that are suffering um, tremendously due to archaic gender policies of the government, but also to um, defend the women's rights activists. Why do I say defend? It's important to defend them, not just show solidarity with them, is because in uh, oppressive countries such as Iran and Afghanistan, women's rights activists suffer harsh repercussions for using their voice, for advocating for justice. Um, So I'll give you an example, uh, just so our audience has insight into how harsh the repercussions are. Just a few years ago, prominent Iranian human rights attorney Nasrin Sutudeh was handed a 138 year prison sentence simply for defending young girls in Iran who were peacefully advocating against the compulsory veiling laws. So again, it's um, multiple uh, layers are involved in ensuring that our hard won gains are not lost. And when they are lost, it's important to amplify and raise your voice. I agree with everything you said. And you mentioned that you lived, you know, in pre-revolutionary Iran, and I'm sure that you've seen a lot of change in the way the community also reacts to um, different issues Um, regarding gender justice or beyond that. Um, With the power of social media, I also know that storytelling um, can progress into something even more powerful. So I was wondering, how Mm -hmm. have you seen activism change in times of social media, especially when it comes to women's rights movements in Iran? Um, Dear, digital activism in particular, smartphones, technology have completely transformed the way political events, movements, rallies, and protests are organized, mobilizing thousands of supporters around the diverse range of causes. Um, In particular, hashtag activism uh, has been able to influence media coverage It's able to inject new narrative and also change the narrative. Um, In a digital world, um, we are able to connect with our um, collective um, peers. Uh, It has, thanks to technology, the world is a much smaller place, empowering and inspiring an entire generation to act in rather unprecedented ways in human history. It has created space for civic engagement, for dialogue. And as you mentioned, the power of storytelling comes even more to life when you have, um, when you're able to reach the global community and share what the struggles of, um, you know, women in different countries face, the injustices they face. So it's hugely transformed the face and overall message of activism in the best possible way. 
Thank you so much. Um, I also agree that storytelling isn't just, you know, escapism, but a bridge to the corners of the world that um, isn't getting exposure and also to uplift the voices of individuals from different backgrounds of, and perspectives and to create inclusive spaces for diverse dialogue. So thank you so much, Dr. Nina, for um, You're welcome. And I also wanted to add when you mentioned the power of storytelling, I wanted to let our audience know how storytelling is a crucial component for women's rights and for achieving gender equality. Um, it is, has the potential to forge connections, to empower and inspire above borders, and to also expand our knowledge and our understanding, specifically having to do with various historical and cultural complexities of what essentially um, constitutes varying definitions of womanhood. Thank you so much. Um, again, thank you so much for your time. Uh, thank you so much for everything you do. Um, and I'll pass it back on to the MCs. Thank you. Thank you, Dira. It was a pleasure speaking to you.